us. We have added lots of extra sailings. Home for the holidays, airports and ferry terminals are busy for the Thanksgiving long weekend. The Tour de Rock team making its final lap. We're just moments away from finding out how much money Vancouver Island has raised again this year to help children with cancer. CTV News, Vancouver Island Report. Good evening for many. It's as much a Thanksgiving tradition as turkey and mashed potatoes and pumpkin pie. Whether it is by car or by boat or by plane, people travel to be with their family and friends for the holiday. And this weekend provides the first major test for the newly renovated airport in Nanaimo. The planes there will be touching down on expanded runways and travelers will be passing through an expanded and upgraded terminal. CTV's Chandler Grieve reports. A short plane ride to the mainland is all that stands between these travelers and their turkey dinners. Over the past five years, the Nanaimo Airport has received $26 million in upgrades. This is the first major travel weekend since they were completed, and the reviews are glowing. And now you just go through the machine, two seconds, they check it up, they check you, and it's gone. And the area when you wait for the people, you know, it's it's much better. Whether you're playing some crib while waiting to send your father back to Montreal. It's going to be hard this week. Not, you know, I had him for 10 days. I'm losing my helper and my friend and my little daddy. <laughs> or reviewing some lecture notes before a monumental family birthday. We're all congregating in Saskatoon for my grandmother's centennial 100th birthday, so should be good. The expansion of the runways and the facelift to the waiting areas have made beating your father-in-law in crib a little easier. They didn't have tables before, so that's not, they get nice they got tables now. So it looks like you're going to skunk them? Yeah, I, don't know. I hate to do that, but <laughs> maybe he goes home, that's the last thing he's going to remember. That's yeah, the last thing yeah, he'll remember. He said, gee, Abraham skunked me. <laughs> for those waiting for their Thanksgiving dinner guests to arrive, the renovated airport provides the setting for some special moments. Where was mom been? Toronto. Toronto? She's been in Toronto on business. First time away from the little ones? It is, yeah. We, we just, we've just become engaged. Both, both lost our husbands, to, our, our spouses to cancer, and uh, our families are getting together for the first time this weekend mm -hmm. in Ladysmith. A mother and daughter excited for their first Thanksgiving together. A family united for the first time and ready for a traditional Thanksgiving dinner. Got some good cooking ahead? I, I think so. I think we got pizza on the way anyway. That should be good. That's what, what everyone wants for Thanksgiving. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> how about you? Excited? Oh, I'm so stoked. Yeah. And Dad heads off on his journey back to Montreal. There he goes, hey? Yeah, but plans to make his return back to his daughter soon perhaps in time for Easter, only six months away. Chandler Grieve, CTV News, Nanaimo. Well, Thanksgiving is uh, also one of the busiest weekends on the calendar for BC Ferries. Uh, so for the next few days, it will be all hands on deck. Sailings have been added between Vancouver Island and the Lower Mainland, with an additional ship put on the run between Departure Bay and Horseshoe Bay. BC Ferries says foot passenger traffic increases dramatically on Thanksgiving weekend with students on both sides of the water heading home to see their families. Well, we don't take reservations for foot passengers. That's why we are advising that they do arrive uh, in plenty of time. We do expect the peak times will be leaving the Lower Mainland on Friday as well as Saturday morning and then returning home on the holiday Monday. Uh, the Tuasa Sports Bay run is expected to be ex especially busy because of the Good Life uh, Victoria Marathon that's going to happen on Sunday. So if customers are traveling to Vancouver Island, uh, they might want to consider traveling between Duke Point and Tuasa. To find out more on sailing schedules and current conditions at the terminals and to make a reservation, visit bcferries.com. Well, as we've been showing you tonight on CTV News, that long road that began at the northern tip of Vancouver Island and has wound its way to the south has come to an end for the Tour de Rock riders. They have wrapped up their ride at uh, the Spirit Stage at Centennial Square in Victoria. That's where our Andrew Johnson's standing by as we await the total. Andrew. Hudson, we're all ready to go here at the moment. Everyone's been waiting for Myra and Robin Farrell from Cool FM. Have our total. Myra, we're ready. We are ready for the official total. 2011, 
Canadian Cancer Society, Cups for Cancer, Tour to Rock team, you have helped raise one million five hundred and five thousand dollars. One million five hundred and five thousand dollars. Hudson, more than one and a half million dollars raised in the 2011 Tour de Rock has one last head, chef, head shave, Caleb from Victoria, still going on. Isn't that fitting? This is the kind of thing people have been doing for months now to raise all of this money. I'm joined now by Constable Sandy Holman from Nanaimo RCMP. Uh, what does this moment mean to you? Look what you guys have done. Wow, $1.5 million for 22 police officers and a couple media riders to get on bikes and pedal down an island. About a half million dollars, that's incredible. It's for the kids and they're benefiting from it, so it's amazing. I know some of these, ki these kids you've met along the way and even young people like Caleb here helping other children. It's about kids helping kids, right? That's what we keep saying and it really is. That's exactly what it is. You see young kids just shaving their heads, young kids doing bottle drives and selling iced tea and, you know, just little things but it's all added up and it's it's all the kids that are doing these and it it's amazing well, congratulations to you and the entire tour de rock team this year i, I think you'll be uh, will you be falling asleep as soon as you get home tonight or staying up thinking about all this honestly a warm bath and a glass of wine is waiting for me at home <laughs> all right thanks a lot Hudson. i'll hand it back to you more than one and a half million dollars for the tour de rock wow well, good for them and everybody who has helped out and made this such a success what an event. That sounds like a good plan for tonight, too, after a thousand kilometers on the bike, too, doesn't it? It does for just about anyone. <laughs> yeah. All righty, Andrew, thank you. Okay. Take care. Well, a former junior rider on a previous tour to rock uh, had a very special reunion today with the Coast Guard crew that rushed her to Vancouver when she was first diagnosed with leukemia. In the fall of 2007, Emily Price got sick. She was very sick. Doctors in Nanaimo said she needed to be rushed to Children's Hospital in Vancouver right away. Her white blood cell count was at such a dangerous level, she could die if she didn't get immediate treatment. But Emily couldn't be airlifted to hospital because of heavy fog, and the ferry would take time that the little girl just didn't have. So a Coast Guard crew was called in to bring the four-year-old and her mother across the water. It was definitely a special case, especially with a small young child, four years old at the time. She, uh, very frightened little girl, um, obviously. So we, you know, we make them feel as comfortable as we can on board, and uh, we had the 40-minute transit across. We made her feel comfortable, gave her a little teddy bear. She, big smile on her face after that, which was something that we all kind of took home with us that night. And, and uh, kind of we just, she was off and uh, off to the hospital, and that's kind of the last we heard of it. Well, that ride was the start of a two-and-a-half-year battle for Emily, but we can tell you tonight that she is cancer-free. Recently, the little girl became curious about the crew that brought her across the water on that fateful night and the boat they traveled in, so they set up a meeting. I was really happy to know that they were just as interested in meeting us as we are in meeting them because they truly did save my little girl four years ago and I just wanted to be able to meet them and tell them how much we appreciate what they did. I remember being on it. What's going on? I don't, I'm scared. And then someone just gave me the teddy bear, and I wasn't scared. Emily's mother says her daughter is doing very well, and they are very pleased with her health, but they will continue to monitor it, monitor it in the years to come. Well, more Canadians than ever before are turning to complementary and alternative medicines to treat pain and illness. Acupuncture is one of many therapies gaining in popularity. But those treatments can often be costly, forcing people to choose between money in the bank and their health and wellness. A Victoria practitioner is hoping to change that with a community model that aims to make acupuncture accessible to everyone. CTV's Astrid Braunschmidt has more. How are you feeling today? Pretty good. Yeah. Jean-Paul Thuot has wanted to be a healer his whole life. My mom worked for a naturopath when I was a child, and so that really got me on the, the path of natural healing. In acupuncture, he says he's found his calling. I do acupuncture because I like to see people get better without side effects or, you know, costly interventions, if, if at all possible. 
A Statistics Canada study showed that just 12% of people are tapping into this alternative treatment, in part because of the cost. That's a statistic Thuat hopes to change by making acupuncture accessible to everyone. Community acupuncture is uh, actually much more traditional in Asia. Essentially, it's treatment in a group setting. At Stillpoint Community Acupuncture, patients pay what they can for a treatment between $17 and $45. Compare that with the cost of a one-on-one -on -one session, which can run as much as $120. Rather than charging a high amount and seeing one person per hour, I can, I can treat many people together and lower my hourly or spread that hourly cost amongst many people. So even your Starbucks barista or you know, your minimum wage earner could afford to come and get the care that they need. How are you feeling since the last treatment? This mother of two says she'll gladly go for the group setting if it means affordable care. At first I thought it would be a little awkward being in a room with a whole bunch of other people getting acupuncture, but it's not at all. Thuat says medical records are kept private and treatments are done on areas below the knees and elbows and patients are not kept to a rigid schedule. With still point you're able to uh, have the flexibility to stay for an extra five or ten minutes if you want. It's a model he hopes catches on as more and more people look for therapies that complement Western medicine without breaking the bank. Astrid Braunschmidt, CTV News, Langford. Fire broke out today in a home in the 600 block of Winchester Street in Nanaimo and trapped one man on the home's deck. The fire started in a mattress and quickly filled the home with smoke. When firefighters arrived, they saw a man on the deck of the home unable to get to the ground. We rolled up and there was smoke coming out of the, the back side of the house. There was a gentleman that was on the back deck. He was kind of going in and out. Uh, he couldn't get down because the deck, there's no stairs coming off the deck. So uh, we sent a crew in to check the fire and we laddered, put a ladder up to get him down. He had a little bit of smoke inhalation on his part, uh, slight burns, but he didn't end up going to the hospital. He's okay. Nobody else was hurt in the fire. The cause is still under investigation. Also from the Nanaimo tonight, RCMP have raided a home they believe was being used as a base for drug trafficking around the Harbor City. Mounties executed a search warrant in the 200 block of Lambert Avenue Wednesday night. When they got inside, they found three men in their early 20s and a 15-year-old girl who was there visiting one of the men. The girl was released into her parents' care. The three men were taken into custody and have been charged. Police say uh, the raid took a significant amount of drugs off Nanaimo streets. They found a sizable amount of drugs. There was crack cocaine, crystal meth, also some ecstasy and a large amount of Canadian currency. This operation had been going on for a while. Our members gathered enough information to execute the search warrant. So this was a significant operation. It was uh, certainly impacting on that neighborhood. And our members as well as the neighbors are certainly glad that the operation is over with. Trio has been released on promises to appear in court. Police have forwarded recommendations to Crown of charges of possession for the purpose of trafficking. Still ahead, an investigation into alleged animal cruelty at a farm in Cobble Hill. Details just ahead. Here's why new Purina One Smart Blend is the one that's right. Wow, I never get sick of this. There's one relationship where you get them and they get you. So feed them new Purina One with meat as the number one ingredient. Packed in tender, meaty morsels and crunchy protein-packed pieces, it's like no other dog food before it. New Purina One, the one that's right. Everyone loves designer fall fashions, but you deserve great value, too. You can get double the designer fashions for your money at Winners, because hundreds of brand names are always up to 60% less. Winners, find fabulous for less. Woodgrove is turning 30, and to celebrate, we're giving away $30,000 in Woodgrove gift cards to one lucky winner. To enter, all you have to do is sign in at a contest kiosk while you're shopping. Enter once a day from September 30th to October 29th. Get an extra chance to enter by spending $30 or more at any of our retailers. So, what are you waiting for? You can't win if you don't come in. Get shopping, and don't miss out on your chance to win $30,000 at Woodgrove Center. Hello? Roger, sick. The film gala's in about two hours. Wanna go? Yeah. Wait, two hours? 
No time to plan? There's still time to whiten. Introducing Crest 3D White White Strips to Hour Express. Now in just two hours, you can have a noticeably whiter smile that lasts for months. We must think you're famous. Let him. Whitening without the weight. 3D White White Strips to Hour Express from Crest. Life opens up when you do. And try 3D White Paste and Rinse. Six parts February rain. Two parts coastal breeze. Eight parts sunshine. Add the happiest cows you can find. An equal amount of fresh green grass. Mix it with a sense of community. Craft it with care. And make it fresh every day. That's what goes into Island Farms milk. Island Farms. Made right, right here. Want truly better hair color? New Garnier Nutrice triple nourishes because nourished hair means better color. Color that's rich, more radiant, incredibly silky. And every last gray disappears for nourished hair. Better color. New Garnier Nutrice made in Canada. Upstairs. Why? This is under warranty. A cozy place to lay my head. Closed captioning of this program is brought to you by the complete first season of Mike and Molly. Available now on Blu-ray and DVD. <laughs> Pigs are not usually known for being picky about their living conditions, but the SPCA says it has higher standards, and that is why investigators moved in on a farm in Cobble Hill. Animal protection officers have seized 88 Berkshire pigs from the farm. This is a rare breed of English pig. The SPCA says the owner did not comply with orders to improve the pig's living conditions and left parasites on the animals untreated. The SPCA also seized 16 ducks from the property, charges of animal cruelty in the case are being recommended. Well, it's Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, the long weekend's here. Friday night. Time to check the forecast. Astrid has that for us tonight across the street at Spirit Square. Astrid. We've had a beautiful sunset this evening, Hudson. It's been just gorgeous for all the people who uh, were in Spirit Square here for the uh, Tour de Rock grand finale. Uh, just a little while ago, we saw bright fire orange as the sun went down and it just was reflecting all over the buildings. Absolutely gorgeous. Tomorrow, the nice thing is we're going to see some sunshine. Here's a look at how the sun is going down right now. Makes the clouds a little pink, a little orange. It's beautiful. Partly cloudy conditions overnight tonight. That's what we can expect. If we take a look at uh, some of the other temperatures right now at Paulson Elementary, it's 12 and a half at Randerson, 12.7. So uh, similar to conditions right across the South Island up towards the Nanaimo area. Tofino, a little more overcast right now, but 14 degrees. Winds out of the west-northwest at 5 kilometers an hour, so fairly calm there. Overnight tonight, uh, we are going to see some winds pick up, and that's thanks to a frontal system that's moving towards the north coast of the province. It's got some wind warnings posted for the uh, Prince Rupert areas, and those winds will affect the North Island overnight tonight and into tomorrow along the east coast of Vancouver Island. Starting around the South Island, you can expect some fog overnight tonight to develop in the downtown Victoria area out towards Souk, 8 degrees overnight. Duncan, a low of just 10 with partly cloudy skies. The fog is expected to come in after midnight. For the Nanaimo area, you'll also see fog developing overnight after midnight. 7 is your forecast low. Port Alberni and Tofino, a pretty foggy night for you later tonight and into tomorrow morning. And as we head on up to the North Island, that blanket of fog will also roll in over you if you're in Port Hardy, Campbell River, or the Courtney Comox area with a low of 7 degrees. Again, winds are expected to pick up around the North Island as we head towards morning. For the South Island, we won't really feel that, although we are going to see a slight chance of showers in the later afternoon hours for the West Shore and towards Souk. Otherwise, overcast conditions with some sunny breaks and highs up to about 15 degrees in Greater Victoria. Towards the Cowichan Valley area, if you're around the Duncan area, you're going to see an overcast day with a chance of showers later in the afternoon and evening. Salt Spring Island could see some sunny breaks. Should be nice on the island there tomorrow. 
Heading up towards Ladysmith, Nanaimo Parks, Volqualicum, uh, you are also going to see a pretty cloudy day. Some fog is expected through Nanaimo. That should dissipate early in the morning. If you are going to see some showers, they'll come later in the day, but there will also be some winds picking up again, thanks to that low pressure system that's moving towards us. Showers on the way later in the day for Euclid and Tofino after some sunny breaks, but first thing in the morning, you'll likely see some fog as we head towards the Comox Valley and up to Campbell River. Similar sort of pattern with windy conditions throughout the morning, dying down later in the afternoon, and then you might see some showers. As far as how strong these winds will go around the North Island, well, they'll be southeasterlies up to 30 kilometers an hour. Exposed areas could see those gusts up to 70 kilometers an hour, where the strongest winds are expected tomorrow with the system is Prince Rupert with gusts up to 90 kilometers an hour. So that's where the wind warnings are posted for tonight and tomorrow. Otherwise, uh, other areas in the province going to see sunny breaks through Kelowna and Kamloops. Nice and clear in Fort St. John. Your extended forecast is brought to you by train. It's hard to stop a train. And as we head into the long weekend, the North Island's going to see a pretty wet and windy one. And it's going to be wet and soggy and gray right the way through to next Friday. For the Mid-Island tomorrow, you will see that morning fog and that wind with a chance of showers later in the day. Slight chance of showers through Sunday, Monday. Expect some showers and periods of rain. And for the South Island, a little drier for Saturday, Sunday, but Monday's calling for some showers and periods of rain as we head into Tuesday. So the moral of the story, Hudson, as we've been expecting all week, is stay inside on Monday. Thanksgiving's going to be a day for cooking and relaxing, and it's going to rain. And for those uh, cops and media riders who uh, are now off their bikes, a good weekend to rest. Absolutely. And it's a little quieter there now, but boy, <laughs> did they ever do well. One and a half million dollars plus. So exciting. Yeah. So exciting. Asper, thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Have a you good weekend. You too. Thank you. We'll take a break. Jordan's standing by. He has a look at sports for us next. A uh, war of words off the field for the VI Raiders and the Okanagan Sun, but finally, these two rivals will settle their score on the gridiron. That's next. CTV Weather is brought to you by Train, heat pumps and furnaces for comfortable living. This Saturday at Rona, scratch and save from 10 to 50% on all your purchases instantly. Scratch and save up to 50% this Saturday only. Rona, doing it right. Upstairs. Why? This is under warranty. A cozy place to lay my head. Tired of waiting for energy rebates? Get paid now. Introducing Van Al Windows Instant Energy Rebate. When you purchase new windows from Van Al Windows, you'll save $325 or more without audit fees. Receive an instant rebate of up to $100 per window. Pay no interest in five equal payments. On-time installation, or we pay you $250. Visa and MasterCard are accepted, so you can collect your reward points. Why wait? Get paid now from Van Al Windows. yourself sometimes cleaning up after your dishcloth? Bounty Extra Soft can help. It's super durable. And in this lab test, Bounty Extra Soft leaves this surface three times cleaner than a dishcloth, even with just one sheet. Super clean, super soft. Bounty Extra Soft in the pink pack. And try Bounty Napkins. All the policemen are going on a very long bike ride for two whole weeks without hardly stopping at all. Like 900 kilometers. They're going to rent lots of money. Millions and millions of dollars. They'll give it to the Canadian Cancer Society. And they're going to give that money to the scientists. And a scientist is going to try and make his cancer away. Usually kids exaggerate, but in this case, they're not. Cops for Cancer needs your support. Help kids fight cancer and donate at any local Coast Capital Savings or at copsforcancerbc.ca. The Davis Twins are alike in nearly every way, right down to brushing their teeth. So how did only one get gingivitis? Well, more than one in two Canadians do. That's why I recommend New Crest Pro Health Clinical Gum Protection Toothpaste. It fights plaque at the gum line, helping prevent gingivitis. It's even clinically proven to reverse it in just four weeks. And it protects these other areas dentists check most. 
Looks like the twins are even again. New Crest Pro Health Clinical Toothpaste. Life opens up when you do. You don't have to be a member to shop at your local co-op, but for a one-time investment, you can enjoy both the friendly service co-op is known for and a yearly rebate check. Hornby Island Co-op is a vital part of this small, friendly, and beautiful community. Enjoy full grocery, liquor outlet, post office, hardware, ongoing art shows, an outdoor market, a bookstore, and the island's only gas bar. This Saturday at Rona, scratch and save from 10 to 50% on all your purchases instantly. Scratch and save up to 50% this Saturday only. Rona, doing it right. All right, time for some uh, gridiron news and more. Jordan's here with that. Jordan. Hudson, thank you. The end goal, as always, for the Vancouver Island Raiders is to finish the season as the number one squad in Canada. Uh, Canadian Bowl Championship, though, starts with the here and now. And the Raiders face their biggest BC opposition this weekend as they attempt to put the wraps on an undefeated regular season. Out here, walk. Raider reps took on a new sense of urgency at practice last night because the Okanagan Sun are on the horizon. Sunday afternoon, Coach Snoop and company hope to run the record to 10-0 and at the expense of the 9-1 and Sun. A first place battle between these bitter rivals is not a new thing. They've been the toast of the conference for years. A Raider win would cross two things off the wish list. First place and an undefeated season. And with that comes home field advantage through the playoffs, which could be key to a successful Raider run. Everybody hates to come here more than anything, or at least they like to make it as uh, popular known that uh, Caledonia is a place they don't like to attend. Um, you know, so uh, Okanagan seems to cry about that more than anyone. So uh, if we get a chance to host and bring them into our park, uh, we, we feel that's to our advantage, and we're, we're looking forward to it, and we're working hard for it. The battle on the field is one thing, but there's been quite the war of words happening off of it. Okanagan Sun Brass have gone on record accusing the Raiders of paying players and creating an unfair playing field. Raiders only odor, uh, <laughs> owner, rather, Hattie Abassi called the Sun a bunch of, quote, sniveling whiners. But the team itself has been well coached on what they can say. There's been a pass with our football teams, but uh, I, you know, I, I'm, that's a touchy subject with me. So I'm, you know, it's, uh, you know, it is what it is, and you know, we're two football teams that play against each other. Well, I can tell you right now that um, we have discussed as a team uh, and what we're going to say in the media. So I will say it as, uh, as kindly as this that we absolutely love the Okanagan Sun. We have love for them, and we can't wait to play them because we love them so much. I, th I think he's being facetious. I get that sense. Sniveling whiners. Well, how do you uh, never sugarcoat it, does he? You know what? He's a man who speaks his mind. Yeah, and he's television gold, and that is going to be a great football game. It's refreshing, isn't it? Mm -hmm, yeah, it no. should be a great game. Mm -hmm. All right, Jordan, thank you. Have a good weekend. All right, you too. Uh, that's tonight's edition of Vancouver Island Report. Andrew Johnson's in for Cheryl tonight with CTV News at 11. Have a happy Thanksgiving and a safe long weekend. Here are the folks who bring you CTV News on Vancouver Island seven nights a week. Clothing provided by Outlooks for Men in downtown CTV2, a division of Bell Media.